Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session on full stack security for cloud applications with Cisco AppDynamics. Uh, very excited to be here. Uh, my name is Vipul Shah. Let me go back. Uh, I'm Chief Product Officer at AppDynamics. And I would also like to introduce Ariel Schuper, uh, my colleague. And he is the product manager for uh, the full stack uh, security application that we are going to showcase today. Um, and he has a presentation that is full of demos. So it's really very exciting. All right. So uh, what we are going to do is first we are going to talk about what does full stack observability mean, uh, lay down the foundation for what we are building, why we are building. And then what we are going to do is Ariel is going to go into uh, some of the details of the application security, uh, the why, the what, and the how. Um, and particularly, he's going to showcase all of that with the help of demos. All right. So let's talk about full stack observability. Um, you know, the application landscape is very, very complex, right? I, I know all of you know that. There are so many different layers to, uh, to the application. You know, even a simple mobile application where you're just you know, checking your bank account balance, you're just trying to know what's the status. You know, that very simple act itself translates into a whole complex set of uh, interactions uh, on the back end. Right? You're talking about various layers to the stack. Uh, there is campus, there is branch offices, data centers, and of course, edge, IoT, and cloud, right? And uh, you know, a lot of our customers um, actually have, uh, you know, there's public cloud, obviously, there's hybrid clouds, there are different, uh, there's internet in the middle, uh, different layers uh, to the infrastructure and to the application. So all of this makes modern application very, very complex. Now. Application is not an isolated entity. An application actually interacts with a whole uh, set of services and infrastructure elements. And that's what we mean by full stack. So let's just talk about what do we mean by full stack. So literally, the full stack means that it is not just the application, but all of the underlying uh, services and adjacent services uh, that it depends upon, that it interacts with. Uh, so if you were to visually think about this, I would start with a set of infrastructure services at the very you know, bottom that underlies applications. You're talking about the compute, storage, uh, obviously network, and not only that, uh, along with that are a set of what we call as, or what I think of as you know, uh, platform services. You're talking about databases. You're talking about message queues like Kafka and whatnot. You know, you're also talking about load balancers, API gateways, and the whole ecosystem that really enables the application. And then, of course, there is the application itself. But application is not a modern application. is is a very distributed application, right? There's a whole lot of backend services, microservices that run on an, a container orchestration platform like Kubernetes, right? Or it could be serverless. But the whole bunch of backend services that interact with each other, and you would probably have a mobile application or a browser application that's at the very top of it, right? So the entire set is what we mean by a full stack. So a full stack is a very critical element. Now, when you're observing an application, it's not just enough to observe that application, but it's very critical to observe the whole stack. And, you know, so the, the, and, and why? Why is it that? So there are these three very important facets to full stack observability. Uh, first and foremost is the full stack visibility. And what do we mean by that? What we mean is you want to know how things are correlated to each other from the point of view of the modern application. You want to know how that application, where is it located? What are its component you know, software services, but also the underlying infrastructure services? What are the associated uh, platform services? Again, the databases, the message queues, and a whole bunch of other services that together enable that application. So you want, you can almost think of it as a topology uh, from a point of view of application that goes all the way down the stack and all the way up the stack. You want a full visibility. You want to know when somebody with a mobile app is 
is using that application, what are the set of interactions from the top to the bottom, right? So that correlation of a full stack is very important. But then that's not just the only thing. Along with the correlations, you really want to understand what is the state of that system, right? So all the different elements of the stack, you want to know its current state. You want to know uh, its metadata uh, you know, for context. So that includes tags and any other metadata elements. You also want to know all of the outputs of that system. And I'm really talking about outputs such as metrics, events, logs, and traces. All of that put together give you a full visibility into the topology, the interactions of the, of the stack, as well as the state and how those interactions are performing, right? So that is, first and foremost, the starting point. But then once you have that point, then you are able to gain insights into the full stack. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, if there is a problem with a particular aspect of your application, the underlying root cause of the problem may be somewhere else. It may be yet another service that the application is interacting with or it may be somewhere down in the infrastructure. So you need to know how these things correlate with each other so that you can understand the impact, the blast radius. You know, if something goes wrong, what is the impact to everything else? And not only that, you want to be able to quantify that impact. How big is the impact? Is the impact meaningful, right? And then that, those set of insights lead you into actions. And those are the things that you know that you can do uh, in order to remediate the problem. The importance of actions is that they need to be seen in the context of business. What you need to know is you know, about a whole set of issues that you find, um, you know, which of those are very important? Which of those are going to matter to your business? Which of those are going to matter to your business transactions? You know, that level of um, understanding the risk, understanding the priority, and importance so that you can, you can actually confidently go and take those actions, that is really what we mean by full stack actions, right? So these three facets to put together is what we call as full stack observability. Now, you know, there are, we, we think of about seven uh, different broad category of use cases um, along the lines of performance, optimization, and of course, security. So when we think about performance, again, we are thinking about end-to-end -end performance, right? The word full stack. So this is full stack for a hybrid application. You want to see an application that spans a hybrid cloud, and what does it mean to track the performance of such an application? Similarly, uh, about, uh, tracking performance for a modern cloud-native application. Um, also, customer digital experience monitoring. You know, you're really are talking about uh, real user monitoring, either for a browser application or a mobile application. Uh, it would include IOTs as well. You want to understand that application dependency monitoring, all of these are the use cases in performance. Similarly, you want to optimize for your application resources as well as cost. But how about taking this exact same approach and applying it to security? Right? Security is a very, very inherent part of observability. So how about taking the full stack uh, you know, uh, observability and apply the same use cases, the same notion to security? Right? So that's what um, we want to talk about. And with that, I want to transition to Ariel uh, so that he can walk through the details. Thank you, people. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So, as Vipul said, let's talk about full-stack security. What do we mean by that? So, I think without no doubt today, we see the impact of security. We see today that a lot of times we found users that don't even know they're missing the allocate tools to their security. From a recent research that presented by GitLab, 47% you know, of security pros don't even know they need the adequate solution. They're trying to use the firewalls, the web application firewalls, the endpoints, without understanding that, for example, in microservices application, it's just meaningless. It doesn't provide any security. I hear a lot of times talk to people that even use, try to use like, you know, legacy endpoints and understand that the operating system is split into the, or shared between different processors that have, all have each different purpose and different results. We know that, you know, the, the discovery of a vulnerability takes time. 
108 days on an average, that's fine with large breaches in small microservices or small cloud application, it could be less. But again, to discover, to understand, to see what happens, it takes time. The business impact is big. Not big just like you know, direct losses. Also think about the indirect losses. You see your name on the headlines. You see you know, the stock share going down. I mean, last year we all witnessed what happened with solar winds, you know, this huge impact it has on the industry. So all the things you want to avoid them. You definitely don't want uh, you know, to leave security behind and, and, and focus on, on everything else. Now, when we want to analyze you know, modern applications and we want to see where those challenges are coming from, so not just that we need to allocate tools for that, but you also have a much more complex environment. We have many more pitfalls to follow, we have many more potential places to look. So I want to take you just through this you know, slide. And this is kind of like, you know, where Gartner you know, uh, lists the 11 different you know, threat vectors of containers. But even if we don't use containers and use other compute systems, it doesn't make a difference. Think about like, what happened to our environment and what do we need to secure. So we start with the developers and they're writing the code, which is great. You know, they're committing the code to the Git you know, repository, and we need to make sure that no one, no one, is, in, no one is impacting, no one is, has any access to the Git, no one can do any changes. You know, we fetch dependencies, and we build out automatically our build, but we need to make sure that we're doing the right dependencies. I just read a few days ago about some fun, I'm not, I'm not saying funny, but some like, you know, sophisticated attack that, you know, that attackers created malicious files in very popular, you know, libraries, called them dash latest, and then, of course, a lot of people by automatically took the latest without even understanding they're taking in, you know, uh, the, wrong, the wrong, you know, libraries and importing the wrong dependencies and just adding, inserting the back doors. Uh, all the build system, today, you know, everybody loves to use the managed build system in the cloud, we read more and more in the news about you know keys which leaked, keys which are open, and then essentially attackers can get the keys and start you know cloning or you know changing your repositories, even pushing things to, to production, which are completely different from what you are doing. But even if you move to production and let's say okay we we covered everything and we know we, we're closing everything behind walls and it's covered, we're working in a, in a distributed architecture, multiple containers, multiple clusters, we're using sometimes streaming applications like Kafka. And then if, in, you know, in old words, we used to segment and try to segment applications and work with some micro-segmentations. When we have like a shared you know, Kafka cluster, the whole segmentation is not relevant. If you have like multiple clusters and you know, we want to make sure that there are communication, we need to expose services outside, it just make our life much easier. Oh, much, sorry, much more complex. So what I'm trying to say is that modern application create more challenges and create some more risks that you know, if you want to look at the full stack security, we want to make sure that you know, we address them and we cover them as well. But it's not just that. It's not just like that it's the modern architecture and the new technologies that cause us some challenges. Let's look about all the stakeholders. We have many stakeholders who are responsible for the application security. Now those stakeholders in many cases work in silos. It's not, I mean, there are places where we see like, you know, it's a whole unified team that have different roles, but in, still in many organizations, we still see like different you know, silos, different teams. So we have the developers, and developers really want to focus on their application. They want to make sure it has the best features, and it has the cutting edge technologies, and it's really, really, really working great. And security is not the main focus. The main focus is the application and the features. And even if security was their main focus, they not always necessarily have the right tool set or the right skill set or the right knowledge. It's not their fault. It's not like, you know, the default thing that developers learn to code. And we have our operation team, you know, the DevOps team, the SRE team, and they really want, you know, to, you know, make sure that, that the platform, the infrastructure works and it works in high performance and the user experience is really, really great. And, you know, everything is really good. And yes, yeah, they, they do. They do add in, you know, security tools. We do add CI scans for vulnerabilities and we can do some, you know, code scanning in CD to make sure the infrastructure is working. But they're in between because it's not the main focus. They're still focusing, make sure that the infrastructure work well. They are a little bit behind the developer teams in that intimate understanding of the application, so not always sure how to tune the security well. So, you know, they, they want to help, not sure they have all the tools and the knowledge. And then we have the security guys, which are usually very few. You know, there's much more developers and much more SREs and security guys. 
And they need to run after all of developers and try to make sure they match the right policies and use the right toolings. And a lot of times they're missing the right context because there are very few security guys and they need to work with many developer teams. So we're having multiple stakeholders, not always working in the same teams, having the same knowledge, and they all try to work together and stitch together the speed of application development and feature release with the security needs. And we want to make sure that no one stop and no one slow down each other because otherwise we create friction that we don't want. And if you ask me, you know what, who said that there is you know, a big concern? Maybe it's not a big concern because maybe in legacy systems, you, know, you can break in, you can spend 280 days in the organization before you get discovered. There's many things which you can expose. But maybe in small microservices, there's not a lot of the data, not a lot of you know, information in there. So when you look at recent studies, what you can see is that there is a lot of more vulnerabilities which are being discovered every year. Now those vulnerabilities are not just like you know, small negligible thing. Those are really, you know, in a, in a recent study from Tinable, they show that it's 56% of them are, you know, in a high or critical severity. Meaning, yes, they have a very high probability to get exploitations. Now a lot of times there is more, you can do some even more, you know, fine grain, you know, deep look into those vulnerabilities and only check those vulnerabilities which already have exploits. But when you have a door open, you know, in your house, you don't know when the, you know, the, the, the burglar will come in, right? So you need to make sure that um, you don't want to have those kind of things in your environment. You don't want to have them uh, in your uh, software. And uh, another worrying st statistics is when you see that a lot of times security teams, their hands are full, they get a lot of alerts, they don't want to slow down the business, and then we see that 35%, you know, just, you know, uh, neglect the alerts or saying, you know, let's keep it for better or more, when we have some more time, usually never happens. So when we came, you know, in Cisco and wanted to design a full stack security and add this all capabilities add in, we wanted to create a platform that addresses all these challenges. Make sure that it's create a good balance between speed application performance and security, so we don't slow the business, we don't degrade the performance of the application, so the security is really can be, you know, as an add-on, as a plus to the application itself. Make sure it addresses all the new threat vectors, so there are many threat vectors, there are many touch points, we want to make sure that we address all of them, and we want to make sure that we're doing not too much noise, you know, little time, and reduce the false positive, or reduce the friction uh, with, you know, potential team that need to go and remediate them. And if I want to touch upon all those items, and I want to show you, you know, a demo, what, I'm, what does it mean? So first, zero friction deployment. We want to make a very simple deployment, something which can seamlessly weave security into DevOps tool chain, okay? Um, instant activation, and this is really an important point. We want to make sure that when we install the system, we automatically see everything, but we want to do more than that. We want to make sure that when we install it, we can also activate the security. Because a lot of times, you know, during the deployment, we want to empower developers for them to create a security policy, for them to create the manifest, right? We want them to, to do this kind of thing, not just, you know, leave it to the security guys because they have many more teams they need to handle. And we want to make sure there is the minimal footprint, right? I'm, I'm, I'm only putting the necessary, the minimal tools, and even if I have large clusters or large environment or multiple containers, I don't have, you know, I don't like, you know, disturb your performance. I don't degrade your performance. I don't add too much overhead. I can really, really do it in a minimal full site. So let's switch into the demo. I'll try to do it myself. Yes, perfect. And what I want to show you, what we prepared for you here, um, is a nice demo showing how we can address all these three vectors um, and create, you know, simple deployment with DevOps tool, instance activation, and minimal footprint. Now, in order to do that, what I did is I created a small Terraform file, which you can see over here, okay. It uses our secure CN provider, 
so it can help us you know, to you know, deploy and implement it. But not just it, if you can look over here, I also want to create policies. So I want developer teams not just like, you know, to in add the security to their clusters, I also want them to be, you know, to be the, the only one who can really do you know, the security and can even decide in the policies what my, when they you know, deploy a microservice, who you communicate with, who can expose to, how they want this communication to happen. We want to empower developers to have all of that done. So let's go. So I'm just warning you, usually when you do live, it's not gonna work, but we'll try. Okay, where am I? All right, okay, perfect. So we'll do Terraform, apply. Okay, we're gonna apply this Terraform file, we're gonna build uh, the secure, secure cloud native, secure up cloud native into your cluster, okay, and we're gonna deploy the policies inside. So just before we do that, maybe I'll just switch. Uh, I'll just switch for the security and dashboard. All right, I'm gonna log in. I'm just gonna show you that the policy section is still empty. So now you can trust me. All right, those are deployment rules. We're not gonna to touch them. I'm gonna to switch to the connection rules. You see there is no rules, everything is empty. Nothing is defined, okay? No rules defined, so it's easy. Okay, so it's there for apply. Great, yes. Okay, we'll give it a few seconds. What it's gonna do now is gonna just like deploy the secure CN. The secure CN is deployed into Kubernetes clusters. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll show you in a minute the Kubernetes cluster. I forgot to show you before. Um, it's an admission controller, so it's, we'll, sh we'll show you it's a single container, runs inside your cluster, have a very minimal footprint. So if you have like 1,000 nodes, you know, cluster with 10,000 no 10, pods running on your cluster, you still need a single admission controller. It's accompanied with a vulnerability database, so you can really get, you know, up-to-date vulnerability, uh, you know, information about your, uh, the, the running, you know, the running cluster, and that's it. So. We're going to see that. We're going to see the, the network policy. So just like installing the admission controller, it also install intercept the policy that the developer wrote, and we're going to see this policy applied uh, into the system. Other than that, so we talked about using DevOps tools. We talked about you know uh, adding immediate impact and minimal footprint. All right. It takes some time to install. Um, we'll give it a few seconds more. Let me show you in the meantime, I want to show you what, 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 what we're going to expect to see, you know, uh, in the cluster. So immediately after the session will succeed, what we're going to see, we're going to see our uh, PII data. Okay, it's going to be the, the name of the new cluster. Uh, and we're going to see this rule name that we call developer auto-generated policies allowing the pod name billing, which running in the PII data, to communicate with the database, the MongoDB database. So it's gonna be our policies. Let's see if we finish the installation. Uh, yes, we did. You know, installation finished successfully. You know, we added the, the pod, we, we added the two elements, which the policy and the controller. Perfect, that's now same. Let's first see, you know, CTL. I want to show you, let's see the, you know, our environment. The spaces, fine, right, QCTL, I forgot, get pods, this is all yes, name spaces. So now you can see all our namespaces. All right, we cannot. All right, okay. We get the pods. So see those are pods which are running in my cluster. Uh, we're gonna get in a minute. This is our secure CN. So you see it has three, three containers. One is the clear database. So it's a database for vulnerabilities. And we have our, you know, admission controller called PortShift. Now, if I'm going to go back to my UI, I'm going to hit refresh. So two things are going to happen. 
I see there is a new policy, which is called developer auto-generated policies, and this is the billing pod which can communicate with the MongoDB. I can immediately switch to the navigator, okay? Here I can see the information about all my pods. Okay, I'm just gonna finish. I'm just, um, right. So I still don't have connections, but I see, you know, I can see now, this is the, the, the environment which I showed you, you know, with different clusters. Uh, we can see everything is deployed. We can get into the understanding and the whole thing with a very minimal small footprint of the application. Now, if I switch back, um, yes. Does it work? No. Okay, great. So now, if I want to switch back, okay, and I want to talk about, so we saw that there is a zero friction, okay? Small footprint, DevOps tools, we can deploy it easily, we can configure policies easily, uh, we can really do it very nicely. Now, okay, so we did the first step, we are installed, we are in, didn't take too many resources, great. And now what do we get? Okay, what do we get from all of that? What do, what do we have? So when we talk about full stack protection, okay, of course the entire life cycle, we wanna make sure that we protect the entire stack. The entire, you know, if we have, you know, running in the cloud, we're having, you know, orchestration layers, we need to make sure, you know, our, you know, AP, our orchestration is, is covered. We wanna make sure, you know, our container itself is covered, it's configured properly. You know, it's not running as a root, it's not running as privilege. You know, we don't want to allow, you know, privilege escalations, or we want maybe to limit to be able to only read only to the root file system. So we want to make sure that the entire configuration is configured properly. We want to make sure that it's running in the right place under the right, you know, security tools. This is the orchestration. We want to make sure we are interacting with the Kubernetes master nodes and the control plane to verify that it is, sec that it is secure. But we don't want to neglect the code, and the code is, is part of our own internal code that we develop. It's also part of the de dependencies you know, that we brought in. So we want to make sure that you, know, you get full visibility into issues that you have in the code, and issues that you have with your dependency. We also want to be sure to make sure that you know, the, the application is safe. And what does it mean? Let's assume that you really did everything great, infrastructure configured properly, the cloud is really secure, uh, the code has no dependencies with vulnerability because you really have a very sophisticated, you know, uh, patching management system, but your developers or developers chose APIs which are insecure. They're using consuming APIs which were breached, the token is now available in the darknet for everyone, and by using it, people can just like, you know, uh, get the identity and you know, if, even if we did the proper authentication, the proper authorization, I can really expose it to anyone because everyone can steal my tokens, my tokens got exposed. So we want to make sure that we give you the full visibility and you see everything, you see the whole thing. And this is what I'm going to show you in a minute. So we want to make sure we cover the entire stack. We cover you from all the different risks. So the risk coming from classical attacks, you didn't configure correctly. The risks that stem from maybe supply chain. You did everything right, but you know, you consume a bad package or bad dependencies, you call a bad API. So you did everything correct, but you're using some, something in your supply, software supply chain uh, was breached and you get the full you know, visibility to it. But I think that's not enough because you need to prioritize. You cannot do everything, right? There is many challenges, many concerns. You know, you need to really prioritize your work. And here, I think, here comes, you know, the, the interesting, the business insights. You need to make sure that you prioritize the work based on the business needs, and not just, you know, making sure that the performance are really good, but also the security. And of course, security is always measured based on the weakest, you know, weakest link in the chain. But you want to make sure that when you look at your, want to prioritize your security work, what needs to be fixed, you can put in those business consideration. And to make sure that you do that, you need to have full business application. So let me switch back to the demo, and let's see how we can examine and get the full business you know, context 
into our security. Okay. So switching back and going looking into our, you know, into the uh, secure application cloud native dashboard. So very interesting thing is first is you want to make sure you have the full visibility. So you can see all your clusters, you can see all the different communication, and you can see not just what's running in your clusters, okay, let me just collapse everything, but even what's coming, you know, from the outside, who's accessing, what APIs they're using, what, you know, information uh, is important for you to know, and obviously it's important to know what APIs, uh, what calls, where your, your applications are communicating with. But let's take you know, our specific application, the one we just you know, de deployed and installed. And for us, you know, it'll be really important to understand you know, who's communicating, what they are doing. You know, uh, we can see like, you know, the different pods, the risks, okay, where they are coming from. And then for us, help us to prioritize first those applications that we want. Now, when talking about the full stack, and here I'm gonna go into the, can switch into the runtime, this is where you can see, you know, all the different uh, risks, and we not just showing you the risk, but also give you some, not just showing you the risk, but also showing you, like, giving you the context. Where is it coming from, okay? So, for example, here you can see there's an Nginx deployment with a critical, with a critical security risk. And you ask yourself, why is it a critical security risk? What's so bad about it? So if you click on it, you can see that it has, you know, high critical vulnerability, okay, it's running as a privilege, it can run as a root, and it's public facing. Public facing means everyone can access it from the outside. There's no need for special policy or special, you know, access tokens or something like that. So that, that it's very easy to, be, to breach something which is public facing, it has, you know, high critical vulnerabilities, and if you manage to break in, you automatically can run as a root and you have your entire, you know, you have access to everything, to the nodes, you can start moving around in the cluster, you can get exposed all this information. So this is very important. Now you can ask me, you know what, but how do I know that this Nginx is important? Maybe this Nginx is, you know, running in, different, in a completely different place. So here if I switch back going to the navigator again, okay, and I can see all my applications, I can see my finance application, I can see my prod application, I can see my prod PII, and here, it really helped me this visibility to see what application is there, uh, what, what, what is the challenge, if there is anything which is blocked, I can switch and see why is it blocked, what, what's the problem, or again here, if I go back to my application which I just installed, and I can look at the, you know, or the pods himself, I can see the risk, it will be much easier for me to go again and, you know, and, and apply this risk. And the same thing that just happened to the policies here, I want to show another example, you know, with the API gateway, that, you know, is accessing uh, an external API which has higher critical risk. Okay, so just as like important to see that those types of things, but also important for me, how do I create policies? And how do I bring this business aware capabilities into my policies? So I just take, you know, let, make a simple example. So for example, I can decide that, let's take an example, we'll call it a demo, just to make it a unique name, okay? that I don't want in my, I don't want, you know, any pods, okay, uh, which has a critical vulnerability, for example, um, and let's say that if I want critical vulnerability, I want it to be aware of it, and I'll use restricted baselines because I want to make sure that my pods are really secure, and here I'll put in enforce, which meaning if you find something that violates the policies, don't give me an alert, don't submit, just fix, change the configuration, those are configuration settings. I wanna make sure that all my, all my containers running with the same you know, configuration settings. And I wanna make sure that, for example, um, you know, I don't use, I only use you know, low risk APIs. I don't want them to call you know, super critical uh, or vulnerable APIs and give me detect. And then I, then I can decide that this will apply only to my finance application because as it's an important application, you really want to make sure that this application by itself, you know, is not important. So this, I mean, this some allow me, you can see the rule right over here, so I have this generic name, demo, uh, and I have all this, you know, declarative policy that allow me to really 
decide how do I want to protect and how do I want to put you know, the context of my application into my security. And the same apply also for my connection rules. I can decide, for example, I'm sorry, I can apply policy. I can decide, for example, that I only want my critical applications to communicate with certain resources, or only, and I want, only just want to encrypt their traffic. Or I can do many things that I can really tune you know, my security level to the, you know, to the application or to the, sim, to the application that, I'm, that, I, that I want to protect. And of course, I can add all the different you know, layers. I can add the API information. I can add the networking part. I can add you know, the vulnerabilities part. I can really tie it all together so at the end of the day, I can get my full stack and it's going to be you know, baked into my security policies. So everything's going to be really weaved together. Okay, so if I switch back, okay, and I'm saying that, you know, we have our application, we have the entire stack of our application, you know, the, the data, the API, the code, the, the, the place it's running, the containers, the Kubernetes, we want to make sure that everything is secure. We can give you, you know, information about any potential risk in any of those layers, and we want to make sure that not just showing you the risk, but also showing you the application context so you know what to prioritize, what to do first, what you can do second, and what you can, do, and what you can you know, uh, push for a different later stage. Right, perfect. So, if we want to summarize that, when we talk about full stack application security, Okay, so the app dynamics with Cisco Secure Application. I hope I meant to show you in the demo that it's zero friction deployment. Very simple to deploy, very quick. You know, can really do it with any DevOps tool. I'll show you Terraform, you can do it with Helm. You can do it, you know, with uh, Kubernetes, you know, kubeconfig. Any, you know, any deployment tool that you want, any, you know, DevOps tool that you want. We secure the full stack. We secure your entire application stack from code, from vulnerabilities, I didn't show vulnerabilities because I thought that was that simple, but I can show the integrated vulnerabilities, show the different vulnerabilities, the one imposed from your own code, the one imposed from the base for the image, you know, that you took, so you can get the full, you know, visibility into it. You can see also the container, what's the, what's the privileges, what's, you know, the, 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 the capabilities the container has, what's the correlation between the container and the, and the guest and the operating system it's running on or the host it's running on. And you can see it together with the Kubernetes information, what policies you have, what network policies, deployment policies, how you can enlarge it all. And the, pre the response or the prioritization of the tasks has the application context. So you can always prioritize your tasks and your response and your remediation, um, and it's all gonna be based uh, on the business impact and the importance you know, of the application uh, to you and the importance of application, you know, to our organization. So this is, in a nutshell, you know, the Cisco full stack application security. Uh, if you want to learn more, you're more than invited to come to see uh, a full demo uh, in the AppDynamic booth. You know, visit our booth, come see, learn about uh, the full stack observability and the new, ed new addition of security into it. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'm available. We'll have to answer your questions. Thank you.